51 of the Transform Your Life in 15 Minutes. We are doing five minute exercises, one each for the mind, the body, and the soul. For the mind portion of it, we're going to be reading the book, Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz. For the yoga, for the yoga, for the body portion of it, we're going to be doing yoga salutations. This is where we're strengthening up our body, um, toning the muscles, and also paying gratitude toward the sun. And then for the soul portion of it, the spirit portion of it, we are doing a five-minute meditation where we're just quieting our minds and focusing on our breath. Hi, my name is Pia McAdams. I am an accounting professor. I'm also a certified coach. I specialize in personal and small business finance and also fitness. I help people reach goals in those areas. And I want to take the time to welcome you for taking 15 minutes out of your day to do something good for you. You have 24 hours and you will be surprised just by taking a mere 15 minutes just to do something for yourself, how that will affect and transform your life. So that is the purpose of this challenge. So I want to welcome you. All right, so let's get started with the mind portion of it. Again, we're reading a book called Psycho-Cybernetics. And again, this is by Dr. Ma uh, Maxwell Maltz, and I highly recommend that you get this book. I know for some of you, um, you know, particularly if you, this is your first time joining me, which if it is, hi and welcome. And don't feel, you know, far behind because really we're on, we're, moving, we're starting chapter six today, but the concepts are pretty much stacked upon each other. What we're learning is we're learning about the power of our subconscious mind. And we're learning that our mind is like a computer. Like seriously, our mind is like a computer. For some of us, for some of us we're working on that DOS operating um, software, right? For some of us, we're working on Windows. For some of us, there's even OS, it's up to Sierra. Okay, but imagine this, like think about this for a minute. If our mind is like a computer and you're working on DOS software, what happens when you're trying to put in 2017 ideas on a 1980, 1970, 1980 software program? It ain't gonna work. You're gonna like try to use your willpower. You're gonna try to, you know, hammer on through it, it's almost nearly impossible. I mean, can it? I don't know. Depends on what it is that you're trying to program in it. But that's what our brain is like. And with that analogy, that program is our self-image. And our self-image is based upon our past experiences, good and bad. Um, but, but mainly like the bad experiences, the ones that really kind of stick out for us, right? We have good experiences, don't get me wrong, but it's those bad ones that program, that are really programmed, etched into that, that subconscious mind. Those things that you heard when you were a child or that you said to yourself, like using words like I can or that I'm a failure or even literally taking something to be a failure when you're not. Let's say that you're not good at math and so you, you conclude that you're a failure. No, you're just not good at math, but that doesn't mean that you're a complete failure. So that's the software that I'm talking about. If you're operating on a DOS software and that was programmed in you long time ago and then now it's in 2017 and you're trying to do big things, you're trying to you know, achieve your goals, you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to get out of debt, you're trying to, you know, whatever your goals may be. And if you're struggling with it, this is explaining it why. But not only is the book explaining that, it's also giving us tools on how to reprogram ourselves. Because guess what? Just like the computer software can be upgraded, we can upgrade our subconscious mind. The problem that I see, and this is what was struggling, um, was, was um, st that I struggled with, and also it was like frustrating for me, was trying to, I didn't, I didn't know that, you know, the, about the self-image and how that really, really played a, a portion, a big portion of how we um, achieve our goals. And so now there's actually tools that we can use to pre-program it. But we can't necessarily do it consciously, like, okay, I'm going to start, you know, saying positive. I hear you, Pia. I'm going to start being positive around myself, and I'm going to start hanging around positive people. Those are great places to start, but it goes much deeper than that, and it's going to take a long, it's going to take some time. In other words, it took time for you to program that self-image into you, so guess what? It's going to take some time for you to get it out. So I say that because be patient with yourself. For some of you, if this book is not ringing, like if it's not resonating with you, that's okay. Imagine, like, for those of you, like, how many of you guys have actually tried to read the Bible? Like, seriously, tried to read the Bible, like, from cover to cover, and you're like, okay, I know it's in English because I, 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 I can read the words, but what the heck is it talking about? That's the same thing what this book is explaining is because understanding does not come from your conscious thought. It just doesn't. Okay, Un um, understanding comes from inspired thought. So, in other words, when you're reading the Bible... If you're praying and you're meditating, then you're getting the internal um, guidance that's explaining to you what it, what it means. And I know for me, like for years, years, you know, 
how old I am. For so many years, I've attempted to read the Bible, like early on, early on, um, earlier. I attempted to read the Bible, I just couldn't understand. And guys, I'm a PK. If you don't know what a PK is, it means a preacher's kid. My dad was a preacher. He was a chaplain in the, in the Navy. So I grew up in the church. But when I tried to read the Bible when I was young, it was like, oh, you know, I just, you know, I would read it, but really I just didn't understand it. It was only until I started praying and meditating where the understanding came from me. And guess what? It didn't always come from reading the Bible. And what does that mean? Not that this is the Bible. <laughs> I'm not saying this is the Bible. I'm holding it up. But what, am I, what does that mean? What it means is this. Like I could be reading another book or interacting with someone else where it was applicable to, let's say, a story in the Bible. And I would just all of a sudden, you know, because my mind was open, I would just get an inspired thought like, oh. Now I'm like, oh, that's what it meant in the Bible. I, I probably hadn't read the Bible, you know, like months beforehand. But all of a sudden, because my mind was open, I just like all inspired thought would come in like, oh, that's what it meant. And we do that. Like our subconscious does that to us where we, like, let's say that you forgot someone's name. And then later, you know, a couple of days later, like, oh, that was what that, per that person's name was. Or you see someone that's familiar, like, oh, yeah, that's who that, where I recognize that person from. That's because we're programming the information into our brain, our subconscious. But later on, as we become more open to the to the um, to the subject area, the inspired thought will come. So if this is not resonating with you, if you're like Pia, I hear you. I seriously hear you. You're talking English. I hear you. I just don't understand what you're saying. That's okay. Just be open to the possibility. Is all I'm saying. Later on, as you're going throughout your life, or as you're doing something, you're gonna be like. Oh, that's what she was talking about. It happens all the time. So again, don't get frustrated with yourself. And you're like, okay, I just don't understand what you're talking about. I'm not going to watch you anymore. You know, don't give up on yourself. This is about transformation. And guess what? Transformation comes internally and it's going to express itself externally. But we are sowing right now. You're going to reap the benefits later. I promise you. Some of you are reaping right now as I explain some of my stories. But anyway, so we're learning the different tools that we can use to help program our subconscious and again it's going to take time but some of the things that we learned about is we're learning to use imagination is one of the things that we learned about we also learned about mental picturing you know using those visual aids mentally picturing yourself you know in the place that you want to be we also learned about acting as if I mean become your own actor and you have to believe it has to be something that you truly believe and then last but not least we learned about the power of rational thought okay so in other words rational thinking like, just say to yourself, is that rational? Is that rational to conclude that I'm a failure just because I didn't do this or I don't understand this? That's not rational, okay? So those are the things that we're learning. So today we're moving on to Chapter 6, and this is the entitled Relax and Let Your Success Mechanism Work for You. So remember, just be open, breathe deeply, and let's get started. Stress has become a popular word in our language. We speak of this as the age of stress. Worry, anxiety, insomnia, stomach ulcers have become accepted as a, ne a necessary part in the world in which we live. Yet I am convinced that it does not have to be that way. We could relieve ourselves of a vast load of care, anxiety, and worry if we could but recognize the simple truth that our Creator made ample provisions for us to live successfully in this and any other age by providing us with a built-in creative mechanism. Our trouble is that we ignore the automatic creative mechanism and try to do everything and solve all of our problems by conscious thought or forebrain thinking. The forebrain is comparable to the operator of a computer or any other type of servo mechanism. It is with the forebrain that we think I and feel our sense of identity. It is with the forebrain that we exercise imaginations or set goals. We use the forebrain to gather information, make observations, and evaluate incoming sense data, form judgments. But the forebrain cannot create. It cannot do the job to be done any more than the operator of a computer can do the work. It is the job of the forebrain to pose problems and to identify them, but by its very nature, it was never engineered to solve problems. Don't be too careful. Yet, that is precisely what modern man tries to do, solve all of his problems by conscious thought. Jesus said, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit upon his stature? Dr. Norbert Weiner tells us that man cannot even perform such a simple operation as picking up a pen from a table by conscious thought or will. Now, let me just kind of explain that, um, what he just said about a man cannot perform a simple operation as picking up a pen by conscious thought. 
early on, if this is your first time watching, and if you wasn't watching from the very beginning, we learned an example of how to um, our goal mechanism works, either by you know consciously thinking that you want to pick up a pen. But even though you, you consciously thought the goal of picking up the pen, you don't consciously think of every action that your body has to take in order to pick up that pen. So that's what he's talking about here. In other words, we don't think about the muscles that contract and, you know, the fingers and everything to try to grope and find it. We don't consciously think that. We just go for the goal of picking up a pen. But internally, that's how we actually do, perform the action. Okay, because modern man does depend um, almost entirely on his forebrain, he becomes too careful, too anxious, and too fearful of results and, and the advice of Jesus to take no thought for the morrow or of St. Paul to be careful in nothing is regarded as impractical nonsense. Yet this is precisely the advice that William James, Dean of American Psychologists, gave us years ago, if we would but listen to him. In his essay, The Gospel of Relaxation, he said that modern man was too tense, too concerned for results, too anxious, and that there was a better and easier way. And that was in 1899. If we wish our train of ideation and volition to be copious and very and effective, we must form the habit of freeing them from the inhibitive, inhibitive influence or, or of reflection upon them, of egotistic preoccupation about their results. Such a habit, like other habits, can be formed. Prudence and duty and self-regard, emotions of ambitions and emotions of anxiety have, of course, a needful play or part. Oh, sorry, let me start. Let me start that one again. Such a habit, like other habits, can be formed. Prudence and duty and self-regard, emotions of ambition and emotions of anxiety have, of course, a needful part to play in our lives. But confine them as far as possible to the occasions when you are making your general resolutions and deciding your plans of campaign and keep them out of the details. When once a decision is reached and execution is the order of the day, dismiss absolutely all responsibility and care about the outcome. Unclamp in the word your intellectual and practical machinery and let it run free. And the service it will do, the service it will do you will be twice as good. So in other words, you know that old adage, let go, let God? Let go and let God. Okay, so that concludes the mental portion of it. And guys, have you realized that if you have been with me since day one, you have spent 315 minutes on doing something, on transforming your life and doing something positive for yourself. And again... The goal of this is just to kind of show you that you don't have to spend hours upon hours. Like a lot of times we psych ourselves out by thinking we have to spend hours upon hours on doing things to help our, our bodies, our minds, our bodies, or our soul. But really, it's the little baby steps. Okay? Remember, this is my wall of positivity as I walk by. Again, don't discount the power of surrounding yourself around positive things because, as I mentioned, it's not going to be easy. But it will be easier if you are surrounded by positive things and positive people because negatively will dispel you and dispel all your positive ideas. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the yoga portion where we're going to be doing sun salutations and then immediately we're going to fall into um, a relaxation state by doing some meditation. Okay? Remember, I invite you to join me, not just watch me.
ramasser. All right, this brings us to the meditation portion. So I want you to sit in a nice, comfortable position. Again, if you are having sitting in a chair, make sure that your shoes are off so that your feet are grounded to the floor. Just kind of relax your body. We're going to use you digress, which means we're going to do full diaphragmatic breathing. So as you inhale, your stomach is going to expand, your chest is going to rise as the diaphragm goes up. And as you exhale, your chest is going to fall, your stomach is going to go back in as the diaphragm returns back to its original position. We're inhaling for a count of one, exhaling for a count of two. Just close your eyes, clear your mind, gently push the thoughts aside.
and return fresh and calm. You've done something good for yourself today. Now that concludes day 21 of the Transfer of Your Life in 15 minutes. I invite you to share this challenge with others. I will see you tomorrow, same time. Bye. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day, guys.